Hello and welcome to this special of Inside Oriel in association with Bet Regal. Now, as I'm sure many of you are aware, negotiations regarding a takeover have concluded and we have a new owner, Mr. Brian Ainscoff, who I'm delighted to say is sitting here to my left. Brian, welcome to Oriel Park. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it's been a manic couple of days or even a couple of weeks. Hectic, is the word, yeah. It's been, it's been um, quite hectic, but um, just about got it over the line. And I'm delighted. Word I think come out last weekend that you know you're 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 on the verge of taking over and you're interested, but as you say, dotting the i's and crossing the t's, it's it's not something you can just do in the in a matter of a couple of hours. It takes a bit of time. Yeah, I mean, obviously with the FAI and the due diligence part of it, um, from myself and so forth. Um, yeah, it definitely takes its time, but um, worthwhile. Yeah, how did this come about? This whole thing. To be honest, uh, obviously I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it, um, it came by. I, I I've known um the stat sports people because of my business in America. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've become um sort of um good friends, business partner friends with um Sean in particular, more than Alan. Yeah. And um from from that standpoint, I knew that Sean was um in stat sports and had been looking for investors and so forth to to come on board, and. I actually had sent him one or two um, people that from, from America yeah. back a while ago. And then um, of late, like in the last month or so, um, uh, I got talking to Sean a little bit more in depth when we were having a call about other business, in depth about, um, you know, where he, where, he, where the club is going and what's standing. You could, you, you know, obviously I keep an eye on the League of Ireland because I'm down in Kerry. Yeah. I was down in Kerry, pretty happy down there, but... When, when I found out that where Sean was, I said, Sean, maybe it's something that I'd be very interested in. So it came off off the cuff in that way, just after a, a, a conversation. Then we got deeper into the conversation. And, um, and so that was like about, I would say, four or five weeks ago. Mm. So it, it did come around quick, quick, quick. Uh, it, it, your name wasn't mentioned up until last week. So you, you went about it. Quite, yeah. which is a surprise yeah. this time because everybody's name was mentioned yeah, over the I mean, last couple of weeks. Obviously, because of my ownership and, and, and being the CEO of Kerry, mm. you know, where I was very comfortable and happy. Uh, it wasn't something I hadn't even given thought to because that project is, was near and dear to me and it's, yeah. it's, it's a great project. Why Dundalk? So when, when you're having those conversations with Sean, you, you say you've been in, involved in the League of Ireland for a year, so you've seen what's going on. You've, what, 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 what's the decision in your head that thinks, you know, I want that. I want, I want to take yeah, over that. I mean, club. well, just, just to backtrack just a little is that, um, Obviously, um, being an Irish man, I'd you know played football over here all, all my young life yeah. before I went to America, and I got a taste of the League of Ireland through home farm. And um, when I come back and forth, I, I actually played down the street uh, with Pat, Pat Devlin's team back then, Drada, and um, I'd play over when I'd come back at times. I, I, I you know, Pat, Pat were good friends, so I would play. So I always had a taste, and I always wanted to do something back here. So that's why mm. we started off with Kerry. And but like like anything else, and and, and I think uh, I've said this before to somebody was um, like like when you're a football player. I mean, um, I got the, this opportunity came my way. Dundalk, one of the top teams, top clubs mm. in Ireland from for gener for, for for as long as I remember yeah. as a kid. You know, from um, I could I could name some of the, the coaches back here and some of the players that came through here. But it's always one of the top top clubs. And for me, you know, I'm a competitor. I wanted to be, you know, got an opportunity to be one of the top clubs, and uh, Dundalk with all his history and stuff like that. It, it, it was too good of an opportunity to pass up. To tell yeah. you the truth, yeah, very good, very good. And you've taken full control of the club, but I suppose the question in a league with the likes of Derry City and Shamrock Rovers and the financial resources they have, will you be looking to bring in extra investment or yeah. backers, or will it just be solely you? Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in the short term, obviously. Um, Dealing with um, that sports and their own the, the the current ownership with Andy, um, Alan and, and, and Sean, um, the best way for me to get this over the line was um, to, to be the hundred percent owner. Yeah, you know from a business standpoint, and obviously I have I have investors you know um, that I've I've talked about si since even the last four or five weeks that. Mm. Definitely, I'll be um, looking for investors to help us with the financial side of this club also. No disrespect to Kerry. Is Dundalk a, a more sort of attractive proposition for, for investors when you consider the history and 
the tradition of the club, Premier Division, obviously, the location, is it a... Is it a yeah, I mean, you know, um, Dundalk obviously is a lot further along than, than a first-year yeah. club, yeah. right? Um, um, the reason, so for, from that standpoint, we're ready to compete for Europe, mm. ready to compete to win leagues and, and um, cups and, and, and leagues. So um, from that standpoint, um, and to attract sort of the, the best players in Ireland mm. to come play here uh, and, you know, have, you know, the bigness of it all. I mean, mm. Kerry is only only starting to starting its starting its um its journey, so mm. to speak. So they're totally two different animals in that respect. Um, Kerry, Kerry, I I feel like I, the same way. It's gonna be a, it's gonna do very well, but it's gonna be five ten years. Yeah, again, it gets to where probably where it's re, it's a competing at the top of the first division, and then um getting itself into Premiership, which. I've no doubt it's going to happen mm. with the likes of Billy and, 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 and the boys down there. Yeah. The, the fact you've had a year down there, I'm sure I'll stand you in good stead. You're not coming into the league, you know, yeah. not knowing about it. You, you know everything there is to, to yeah, know about the League yeah, of Ireland. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of education in the last year. <laughs> I'm sure. No, no, no. And, and, the, and the first division ain't, ain't, ain't easy. You could talk to Galway. It took them a few good attempts to get up. And um, you can see the competition down there that's getting stiffer. And you know more economics getting put into and finances put into it. You can see the likes of Treaty and Waterford. You know the um, the, the clubs now that have good backings. Yeah. And even even from now, like you know, um, you can see the different clubs and, and ownerships coming from different parts of the world, primarily in America and Canada with mm. Treaty and stuff like that. So, from the you're here the past couple of days and. I'm sure you've had meetings and you, you, you haven't had a minute, but f- from a football point of view, I think that's what the fans be more sort of concerned about. You've met Stevie and you've met Brian Garton. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I've been with Stephen um, a lot of time mm. last couple of days. Um, wonderful lad. He's great. Um, I know he's a legend around here, himself and Brian. And um, I got a great chance to meet them and get to know them and I want to get to know them more. But obviously I know um, from a coaching standpoint, from his, 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 his short career as a young guy, he's been terrific. Mm. And the fact that um, we're calling it um, sort of a down year when he's two points out of um, what we call um, going to Europe or a third place, you know, and that's a down year. That's that's a credit to the club mm. and it's a credit to him that um, everyone's on a downer because he didn't get to Europe. That's show you the expectations that's, that's here. I mean, I, mean I, I I think if you went there to every fan um, and, and all, all through Dundalk here that you know they want to get back to Europe mm. I mean and that's my goal is that we're back in Europe and, and also that not just back to Europe that, that you know you're competing for titles and you're winning winning cups yeah it's been a bit of a sort of sense of limbo over the last couple of weeks because you know what the, the takeover talks and Stephen's been on record saying he hasn't been able to offer players I'm sure now yeah, that well, sort of reassurance can we expect yeah, a busy couple of weeks yeah I think he's he's off the leash now right. <laughs> I actually see a big smile on his face and you know um, the fact that now he can he can get to work and, and talk to his players and his staff for that matter mm. you know and um, and, and rest it, make them rest assured that hey we're in a good place mm. and we're ready to kick on you, you mentioned Europe that, that's, that's the aim is to get back into back into Europe oh, I mean I mean we're I watched a few of the games from um, over the last week or so, um, obviously on, on tape, and you know, you know, when your fans know that two points, mm. and I saw some of the games where it was against Pats and Bows and them, and left some points on the table. Yeah. I'm sure Steve knows that, and I know the players are going to come back hungrier this season and getting themselves back there. Yeah, I suppose one of the main questions, and it's it's ironic, he's he's here behind us, he's looking over our shoulder. It'd be remiss of me not to ask Pat Hoven. Can we expect uh, an outcome on that situation? Obviously, it's something that, you know, it sort of happened before you came, but can we expect an outcome one way or the other over the next? Well, I mean, um, you know, Brian Mann could see that it's it's a big thing here. He's, mm. a, he's a legend. He's someone that scored that amount of goals. And, um, you know, uh, sort of um, for, for us as a club, I, I think I said it to somebody. Again, I said, I, I, when I was talking, I said, you know, right now, from my standpoint, he signed for Dundalk. Mm. I mean, that's number one. Yeah. Right? He has another year. And, my, uh, and he, right now, he's the number nine that's going to start in February for us. Until anyone tells me different, that's he, he's, he's a good lock player. And he's 
I'm pretty happy with. I think we'd all be happy with that. So you're basically saying the next couple of weeks it's it's about to we're about to we're about to get rolling I can tell my wife she might not see me for the next yeah, three or four I weeks mean, I, I think my wife will be, <laughs> will be lucky to see me you know yeah. I, I know I have to jump back for the holiday season but um, I, I definitely hope to get out and see a lot of the fans and you know get um, where I know that we may be in a lack of communication here and there yeah. but for me it's uh, you know getting out you know there and, and letting them know that hey we're getting ready for February um, we can't wait to get this, um, you know, the fixture list. I think it comes out December fifteenth. Yeah. So when that comes out, um, we can all start to mark what what games we're going to yeah. and so forth like that. Yeah. So and I look forward obviously to the the very first kickoff and home game here. Yeah. Long term, you'll obviously speak of this as as you sort of you know you're here longer, but Oriel and the facilities, I'm sure, is something you're obviously fully aware of and it's something that's I think every everybody associated with the club knows it needs to the facilities here need to improve yeah I mean listen I mean I've been in Oriel Park years, <laughs> and years ago and um, like I said when I played with Rod a little bit and I've seen most of the parks mm. and I think most of the parks need upgrading mm-hmm. I don't think um, Oriel Park is, is on its own I yeah. think Rovers have, have done a bit because of their council helping yeah. them hopefully we can get some help up, up here but my goal is obviously as as we go on to make to make our club the most professionally run club mm. but also what that means that for our fans that we give them a place that they're proud of on the pitch and and off the pitch meaning that you know stadium upgrades obviously we can all know that the lights need to yeah. be fixed and um you know our academy needs a place to play and you know obviously you know no, it's a marathon but uh, you know but we are in a hurry to fix some of them Oh, yeah. and, and get them moving on so we'll be, we'll be I know there was I think um, there was a, a group that um, was given the task um, in the club to put um, you know some ideas and, yeah. and, 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 and sort of renderings of drawings and, and what we can do and what phases to do I honestly God haven't had a chance mm. to look at all of that and I, I, I expect to be getting in front of those people and this, uh, and seeing what's what's our next step and, and how can we plan forward but but again, you know, I know we've had um, a lot of owners in the last decade here. Um, I plan to be here, you know, at least a decade, you know. Yeah. And, and within that decade, we, we hope that there's huge improvement in the facility and so forth. For, from, especially from your point of view, Brian, you, obviously you're the C, CEO of Boston Bolt as well, USL club in, in the States. We all know America facilities are just, you know, compared to, compared to what, what we have here. So I'm sure it's something you, you'd be keen to. Yeah. So without making promises, but yeah. it's something you would be keen to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, you know, the FAI wanted. Yeah. I mean, you saw an article that came out six months ago about a huge amount of money that they want to do over the next 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. I hope that happens. And and again, when you see the ownerships changing in, in different clubs and um, compared to when 20 years ago, 10 mm-hmm. years ago, you know, it's good. It's a good sign, and I hope you know all all the clubs push themselves to make you know if you if you if you if you heard Shelburne talk, whether it's the coach Damien Duff talking about we need to fix our stadium, you know St Pat's, and you know we're all in the same boat, so um, we're all working to, to, to make them better. Stephen and Bar- and Brian want this to be better, and so so you know you said we we'll take one step at a time. Yeah, you mentioned communication. Yeah, it's going to be hectic between now and Christmas, but. January, you will speak to supporters. It's something you, you yeah. you're, you're hoping to regularly do on a on a on a regular yeah, I mean, basis going on, forward. On, on this, and you know, I mean, I'm hoping uh, to get back to America this weekend. Yeah. But you know, the goal is in January that I, I you know I meet and greet. We have a meet and greet and and question and Q and A, and and get to know them. And I know they're really passionate. And 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 that's one thing. Um, the dark is a football town. You yeah. Know? Um, I, I know that and I've and the funny part is I've, I've had I've, I've other friends up in this area that you know I know how, how the die hard fans yeah you know yeah you know how the town takes I know how to t- up the town right yeah, yeah. yeah season tickets and new jerseys to be unveiled yeah. in the next couple of weeks new players so it's, it's lots and lots and lots yeah lots, lots, lots to look for I mean, you know you know um, and ho- hopefully you know I mean I, I saw some of the designs of the jersey look fantastic you know, new sponsors that we're, we're, we're going to be announcing um, pretty soon. And also with our season tickets, uh, you know, Gavin, you know, 
when they're going out and um, when we're when we talking about them. So yeah, a lot of stuff going on. It's it's going to be a busy Christmas season. Yeah, just on the note of sponsors, I think I speak for everybody on behalf of the club. A big word of thanks to Ali and Mike and all the guys at Bet Regal, who sponsors for the last three years. Their sponsorship comes to an end in the next couple of weeks. As Brian says, a lot they look forward and a lot happening over the next couple of weeks between now and Christmas, and then January is when it. Really kicks off. Are you looking forward to it then? Yeah, Pre season, yeah. and then you won't see the, I think, that February the, the 16th, I think, is when the league it begins. Would, it sure. begins, yeah. And I, I don't know, is to do, I know down in, in, in Kerry there was a Munster Cup. I don't know if there's a. We have the Jim Malone Cup against Rotter. And, and when the, what they. An start, annual, it's normally the week before the, the, the season, season. So, so yeah, so we have, we have a little bit of a slash a local derby pre season, yeah, yeah. which is, you know, that'll be cool. And I hope to get that one. Yeah. Well, listen, the very best of luck to you. Thanks very much, Gavin. It was nice to meet you. Yeah, and we look forward to seeing you regularly over the next right. months and years ahead. Me too. Thanks, Brian.